Hey everybody, it's July 8th, Monday. Welcome to Clopepe Vineyards. We're out here in the vines today because we kind of found something yesterday uh, during a tour that was uh, a little bit unexpected, uh, a little bit early, but nothing out of the usual. What I found yesterday while I was looking at some of these berries right basically where you're looking at right now is I noticed these uh, green berries, first of all, are going through what we call bunch closure, which means the last bits of sort of water are moving through the xylem and uh, plumping the berries until the berries touch each other and, the, and the, uh, the cluster is kind of closing to where you can see the final size of the cluster is being set right now. What's going to happen in the next few weeks is we're going to be going through verasion and the magic thing and kind of slightly scary thing that I found in the vineyard today was I actually found some pink berries starting to develop from these hard green berries and that fruit softening period or the onset of ripening is called verasion or verison and uh, verasion is sort of an original French concept. I read once that it meant the search for truth but somehow got translated into the vine finding its sugar, finding its way, finding its color. Now verasion is kind of a magical moment and I wanted to share a couple things about the process of verasion. Number one, by the time verasion begins the cluster is basically full size. Uh, these berries won't get much bigger. Uh, they'll start changing color and the color change is actually an indication of something that's almost miraculous. And that is that color change recognizes the very moment where a few things are happening. And, one th and it all has to do with birds and, and the type of uh, pests or other type of animals that would eat the fruit. So the vine's job in nature is to feed animals. It wants to grow up a tree, steal the tree's light, produce enough sugar that the fruit is palatable. And then that palatable fruit gets into the gut of a bird or a squirrel. And at that point, um, the bird or the squirrel is going to go to a different part of the forest. It's going to relieve itself. Seed's going to drop out in some poop. And basically, if it goes in the right spot, in the right moment, it starts growing up a tree and basically propagating itself. And that's the way that uh, fruit, why fruit is delicious, because it wants to put the seed in our gut and they want, you know, animals to drop that seed off. So the moment that green grape starts to turn red, and let's remember there's no such thing as white grapes in nature, so we're really just talking about red grapes here. White grapes are sort of genetic mutations kept by humans for flavor, but it's actually a genetic disadvantage in the forest for a grape to be white because the birds will ignore it. Because the red color is a visual indication to the bird to come and eat the fruit. The red color means I'm sweet, I'm tasty, I'm palatable, the level of acidity is dropping, the level of sugar is going up, and the exact moment that a grape turns from hard and green to soft and purple is also the moment that that grape seed is viable to go through the gut of an animal and to start a new vine. So the onset of color means a couple things. It means we're about 60 days away, give or take 10 days, 60 days away from harvest. So we could theoretically be looking at sept mid, uh, early to mid-September for bringing in some of the Pinot Noir at around 23, 24, 25 bricks, which is about uh, as, as much as we need to make a 13 or 14 percent alcohol wine. Uh, we'll probably be harvesting down the hill a little bit for some sparkling wine significantly earlier than that. Probably at the end of August when we hit 19 or 20 bricks, the acid is still high, the color is nice, but it's ready to make sparkling wine, higher acid, lower sugar. So that's sort of the story of Verasion. It's basically the, uh, uh, the grapes shutting down uh, most of the water moving into the berry, the accumulation of sugar, and uh, sugar can only get to about 25% in grapes. And after 25%, what you're getting if you're getting higher bricks than 25 is dehydration. So we want to keep the vine viable, we want to keep the leaves green, we don't want to stress the vine too much. There's enough stress in the Santa Rita Hills as it, as it is. We want to let the grapes express themselves, let the vines continue to uh, photosynthesize, not let the vines shut down, keep them healthy, keep them green, and encourage slow flavor development like we're so lucky to get in the Santa Rita Hills so often. So within the next uh, month to two months, the next 40 to 70 days, we're going to be very carefully uh, observing these vines. When they're fully colored up, we'll start testing them, look at the sugar, look at the pH, taste the flavor, and uh, kind of put this all together so uh, we'll be ready in September to start picking grapes and making wine. So that's your Monday lesson on verasion. Uh, sort of the, uh, the search for truth, the search for sugar, and the turning of these uh, green grapes into uh, soft purple grapes. And uh, as they begin to color up, we'll take you back into the vineyard and I'll show you some of these same uh, berries and we'll talk about it. A special bonus today, notice that if I touch this grape it gets shiny. And that's because grapes have a waxy substance on them called bloom. And bloom does two things. One, it protects the grapes against sunburn. And the second of all, it is yeast glue. The yeast floating around us is actually sticking to this 
uh, to the charge, to the ionic charge on these grapes. So the amazing thing about this waxy substance on grapes is not only does it protect the grapes like SPF, but it also attracts the same yeast that turns sugar into alcohol. So I always say if you're religious, it's sort of a, a, a miracle, but and if you're a secular humanist, it just shows you that nature wants us to make wine and nature gives us everything we need to make wine. And also another reason why grapes are never served in prison, because grapes grown anywhere in the world always have yeast on them, and the only thing you need to do uh, to make the wine is actually break the skin, uh, which puts the yeast in contact with the sugar, which begins glycolysis or alcoholic fermentation. So that's it. Bonus little thing about, uh, about the waxing substance on grapes. We're going to watch these grapes turn color over the next few weeks. And uh, we will see you next Monday. And uh, thanks for coming out to Clopeppy and spending a little time in the vines. See you.